It is that time of year again, a time that we come to celebrate all things military in the verse. Time when all the manufacturers come together to show off the top of their lines in the Star Citizen universe. It is Invictus launch week. What's going on everybody? I'm Dark Hour 717 and welcome back. And of course, if you're new here to the channel, welcome. Invictus launch week is here yet again. And this is generally the second largest event for the Star Citizen community outside the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Every year, the event brings out the classic, the concepts, and the newest in straight to flyable ships and vehicles for the verse. And this year is set to be no exception. With Aegis, Anvil, Misk, including a new subdivision named Mirai, all making appearances and many more manufacturers. Before we get into all the details, do me a favor if you like these updates, hit that like and subscribe button because it really does help me get the videos out to more people, and I greatly appreciate it. And if you're subscribed, I sincerely say thank you. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video though to see how you can get entered in for a chance to win a Mustang Beta for the month of May. Invictus Launch Week is starting this week on the 19th of May and will be running through the 30th of May. With a lot of information coming out in the past week as to what we're going to see, let's take a look at what Invictus Launch Week is and what we may expect in this year's event. The purpose of Invictus Launch Week is an annual celebration during the period between Emancipation Day and Armistice Day, the final week in May. It is used to promote the UEE Navy and find new recruits as well as educate the public on the history of the Navy itself. It is also a platform for manufacturers to showcase their running lineup of military ships as well as their newest flight ready and concept ships. Invictus is also the ceremonial celebration of the latest graduating class of military personnel and the induction of the newest recruits, which gather to leave for training at MacArthur Base. Invictus has been a yearly tradition in the lore of Star Citizen since the year 2542, after the Tavarn War started in 2541. Mandy as a whole discovered that they were severely lacking an organized unit of military protection. In most cases, only local security forces addressed any type of threat that presented themselves. The UPE, or United Planets of Earth, which was a precursor to the UEE, sent out a call to raise a fleet and train recruits for the purpose of organizing a large-scale protective force. In 2542, large transport ships would pick up recruits from pads across the UPE and take them to a training facility on Mars, which was called Invictus. As time went on each year, on the same day, recruits would gather at the pads to be picked up to travel to this training facility, cementing itself in a tradition that continued until the ability to space travel became more common and accessible, thus ending the need for the yearly gathering. But the tradition is still celebrated as of 2581, it was formalized as a government-recognized holiday. Though rough years ensued through the Messer regime, the High Command did move the date of celebration from October to May after the Messers fell. In 2803, the 999 Squadron began performing at the yearly celebration, and the real-world inspiration of this event does stem from the U.S.'s own Fleet Week event that celebrates the U.S. Navy every year in New York City and is held in the last week of May. And this is why it has taken on the same nickname as the real-life event. This year's event is upon us though and will be running from the 19th of May through the 30th of May and with it we will see all the military inspired ships on display and available for pledge. The schedule as we see currently is going to be for Crusader, Misk and Mirai on the 19th and 20th of May, Aegis Showcase on 21st and 22nd of May, Anvil the 23rd and 24th of May, Argo, Tumbrel, Origin, Consolidated, Outland, RSI all being showcased on the 25th and 26th. And of course, we have Drake Defense Con on the 27th and 28th of May, and the show's finale on the 29th and 30th of May. This year's events will all be taking place on Area 18 at the Convention Hall. But keep in mind, Drake as a manufacturer is shut out of the event itself due to their acceptance of selling ships to known pirates and the high visibility that they receive as a favor of those taking part in illegal activities. So they will not be seen in the regular convention hall and will actually be found in the commercial hall off of the spaceport. They also are billed separately from Invictus as Drake Defense Con. In the past, there are times that CIG has ran free flies or referral bonuses for the Invictus week, but this year we've seen no official announcement at this time whether they will. But with five days still left to go before the event, we also wait to see the anticipated date and times of the limited hull ship pledge waves 
and this includes ships such as the Idris, the Javelin, and the Connie Phoenix. These schedules are typically released two to three days in advance, so keep an eye out for those to come out. What we do know and have a little of information on is what is going to be likely the most anticipated presentation of the event on day one with the Mirai Fury, or as some have referred to it as the Misk Fury. Mirai seems to be a subdivision of the Misk manufacturer, and with the Fury being the newest release, it is being branded under the Mirai name. With two variants, the Fury has a standard gun version as well as a missile variant called the MX. What little information we have so far is that the two variants are very similar as most are. The key components are identical in the fact that they both have one size one cloak stealth grade D shield generator, one size one roughneck industrial grade D power plant, and two size one hydrocell industrial grade D coolers, and neither of the variants have a quantum drive. That means that this is going to be a hydrogen fuel only vehicle and is not going to be set up for long range traveling and will require another transport to get it from area to area. The design itself has been referred to as an homage to the classic Star Wars TIE fighter by many and appears to have folding wings that tuck in close to the body when retracted then extend out upon launch. Built around a single seat bubble style cockpit, the interior is truly small and near claustrophobic if it wasn't for the fact that the clear bubble gives you a view nearly 270 degrees, the cockpit is almost reminiscent of the car to all. Between the two variants, the slight difference in the cockpit is an available blast shield on the Fury MX that can be deployed via the handle on the upper left console. The weapon loadout for the standard Fury is going to be four size 2 CF-227 Badger laser repeaters and will also consist of four size 2 Ignite 2 missiles loaded into the bespoke missile racks. For the Fury MX, we see that it also retains bespoke missile racks again that carry a vastly larger number of missiles, 20 to be exact. Those are going to consist of 12 size 2 Ignite 2 missiles and 8 size 1 Marksman 1 missiles. The Fury small design really is unique in a military vessel that is designed for combat, especially with no quantum drive as it's really going to be ideal for transport to areas that it's needed from a larger platform. These should also be available to all backers to get their hands on and try as of day one with free rentals or pledges, and I'm actually very interested in seeing what these will be able to do in the hands of the org. A full scale review of the Fury will be done once it's actually released into the game. This though is not the only Premier Fleet Week as we also have the Tumbrel Storm and preliminary looks at the Hollow Viewer this appears to be a single seat smaller size one man tank and really curious as to how this is going to affect events much like the Hurston Hurt Locker when going up against the larger Taunt. This new concept is definitely not going to be straight to flyable as it does have the Hollow Viewer that is in the showroom hall but any inclusion of additional ground vehicles now or in the future is always exciting as it really does broaden the experience. And on the topic of ground vehicles, as it has been no secret, we'll also be likely seeing the release of the RSI Link, a Ursa style vehicle that brings a more luxurious appeal to the utility vehicle. This is a rover that is packaged with the Connie Phoenix and I believe will also be made available for possible pledge as well. As the designs were shown off a few weeks ago in Inside Star Citizen, the rover really almost has a more origin appeal to it than RSI. Paired with the Connie Phoenix, as this is RSI's step into the luxury category, the pairing makes perfect sense and gives Origin a true run for their money. As for the makeup of the Lynx, what we know so far is it looks like we're going to be most likely seeing a single size one pin civilian grade C shield generator, a single size one Radix civilian grade C power plant, and a single size one Frostar XL civilian grade C cooler, and it's going to support a single dual M3A laser cannon remote turret. An almost identical loadout as the Ursa with the exception of the weaponry. Much like the Fury, once the final vehicle is launched into the verse, we'll do a full review on it. Invictus is always a time of new endeavors through the ships and concepts that come out of it. Also, we see a new patch come along to bring us the event, and this year is no different. Patch 319 will be releasing to live, and with it, not only bring us Invictus, but also a large number of new features and gameplay. And this is going to actually include the Loreville Skyline 2.0, where we're going to see an all new skyline and atmosphere in the Loreville area. This will open up restricted fly zones, improve the appearance of clouds and atmosphere effects, as well as improvements to the buildings and their external appearance. 
also bring in with 319 is salvage contract missions which are going to expand on the already fun loop of salvaging offering more opportunities to earn auec in the verse through three separate mission types including legal lawless and illegal missions that you take to known wrecks to salvage we're also going to be seeing tractor beam tier 0.5 item attaching and detaching which now introduces the ability to strip components and weapons that can be taken off to be sold at other areas and earn additional AUEC out of your salvaging. We also see Ghost Hollow Reclaimer PvP missions, and this expands on the current Wreck Reclaimer mission and brings exciting PvP to the site with challenging tasks that can bring in AUEC and allows for working as a group to take and control the area. And finally, we see the mining balancing version one, and this is a rework of the mining system that will turn everything upside down. Bringing multi-crew to the forefront and making mining a more challenging experience, moving the focus to a variety of ores versus focusing solely on quantanium. And also it brings new life to hand mining with janelite, a new high cost mineral that can be found in different caves. Along with all this, we also see functionality and experience improvements with the new player experience which allows new players to earn a permanent set of mac flex armor as they go through the 30 minute tutorial on basic functions and actions and how to interact with the game also we see general stability and performance bringing further smoothness in as the progression from patch 318 continues and we return to the performance levels that were there prior to the rework of the entire foundation of star citizen we also get to see ai fps combat improvements bringing new life and functionality into what was previously unresponsive and unreliable AI in game that presented really no challenge to any of the players. All of this is hitting the live servers this week. And with great anticipation, we could see this as early as Monday, though my expectation is most likely we'll see it on Wednesday or Thursday. Invictus though signals in the midpoint between last year's IAE and this year's IAE and gives us the ability to see what the future holds for Star Citizen. Let me know what you think of this year's potential. Leave me a comment and tell me what you think and what you're most excited for in this year's event. Remember to get your entries in for this month's giveaway, which is a Mustang Beta, and it's a great little ship that has some decent combat skill and is the only Mustang to have a rear living quarters and allows for logout from the bed inside the ship. It is a great explorer ship, and we're going to award it to one lucky player on June 1st. All you have to do is subscribe here, leave a comment on any video to be entered, and you can also get a second entry by going over to Twitch and giving a follow over there where you can also catch our streams every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you would like to help support the channel, hit that join button above to become a member or visit the merch store where you can actually find all new lower prices on all of the gear. All of this is much appreciated as it does provide for the giveaways back to the community. I want to say thank you to all of you for watching and hope you have a great day and please be safe out there and we will catch you out in the verse.